Today we're going to take a look at setting your out of office dates in ShareWell. There are two date fields in the user info table that we can utilize, but we're going to expand upon them a little bit to make them a lot more functional. Once we have these customizations done, you could use those fields to designate if somebody is actually on duty or off duty, and then use that in something like a task leveling or an ownership leveling, uh, something that we've done for other customers. So let me show you a quick way to do that. I'm in the client tool right now. If I go up to tools, table management, I have exposed the user info table. Now normally that's not exposed to table management, but you can go into the admin tool and say to show in table management and then you can see all these users. Now why might you want to do that? Well normally as a user I could go to tools, options, user information, and I can see my logged in user information and I can actually set my time off, my start date and my end date. Now you'll see I've added a little off-duty checkbox here just for demo purposes and there's a calculation in the background which I'll show you in a minute. So if I set my start date as today and my end date as say on Friday, that's going to mark me as off-duty. So now I could use that calculated field and say that uh, somebody is out of the office for these dates or show me all the people who are actually on duty. So if I wanted to do something like the task leveling that I mentioned, it would take into account if a person was actually in the office or not to try to auto assign them to a ticket or a task. So when I go into user info under tools options here, again, that's just for me, but maybe you want a manager to be able to mark people as out of the office. So that's why I have exposed the user info table to table management. Then a manager could go in here, double click on, let's say, uh, Gina, and set her as she's going to be out of the office next Friday through the following Tuesday. So now when those dates come around, the system would automatically mark her as off duty, and we could take that into account for calculations. Now I've exposed that table to table management. Let me say no here, I'm not going to save my changes. So right now anybody could go in and mark people in and out of the office. So I'm sure you'd want to prevent that. So an easy way to do that is if I go into my admin tool, go to security, go to my security group, I could then pick let's say the service desk level one group and prevent them from touching those two fields. So I could go to my BizOb, I could go down to my user info, and then I could find my end date and make sure they don't have edit rights and my start date and make sure they don't have edit rights. So out of the box they do not. If I take a look at my service desk managers, go to BizOb, scroll down and find my user info, look at those same fields, the end date, I could give service desk manager security group the right to edit those two fields. So they could then go into that user info table in table management and they could modify those users. Now of course the admin can modify those at any time. So if I close my security groups here, I'm not going to save those changes, go to edit users, the manager or sorry the admin at any time could go into this table and change their time off. But again if you wanted a manager to actually interact with those two fields from within the client tool, we'd have to put a little bit of security around that. So now let me show you that calculation that I did. I'm going to open a new blueprint. I go to my user info table. I'm going to edit the business object. and I'm going to scroll down and take a look at my last field because whenever you put new fields in ShareWell, they always are at the bottom of the list unless of course you sort the field. So if I click on the name field, it's going to sort alpha. If I click again, it'll sort alpha descending. And if I click a third time, it goes back to the order that the fields were put into ShareWell. So you can always remember that your last put in fields will be at the bottom of that list. So I'm going to double click and open up that field, go to my properties and take a look at the calculated value that I added. So that's just an expression that I called off duty. And let's edit that expression. So all that is, is a simple logical calculation that looks and says if the user info start date is less than or equal to today and the end date is greater than or equal to today. If those two are true, 
then it marks them as off-duty. So if I put this field in Sharewell, I build that calculation, I save it, I apply my blueprint, that's not going to calc for any of the users if they happen to have those dates set already because that only calculates upon change of the user info table. So if you've got some users in there that have those dates set already, you're going to have to go in and manually just at least touch the record and have those be calculated. But any user that has those dates changed after you publish this blueprint, that will calculate successfully and you'll be able to know who is in and out of the office and again be able to use that in um, a process something like auto task leveling or auto ownership leveling. Now, by default, the user info table is not exposed to table management, as I mentioned. So if I go to BizOb here, all I have to do is put a check in, show in table management. Now you may not be able to see the user info table in the expression manager either to build that calculation for the off-duty. So you'd have to put a check in, show an expression. And maybe you want to build some one steps against this as well. So you'd have to show them in one steps. You'd check all three of those. You'd click OK. You'd apply your blueprint, and then you could go back and uncheck Show in One Steps, uncheck Show in Expression Manager, and apply again. So that's a quick look at using the start date and the end date field in the user info table to show if somebody is on or off duty.